greetings to those who love God and Jesus and hope in heaven and eternal life. Pastors, theology students, and church members all over the world, it is nice to meet you. Out of Shincheonji 12 tribes, I've learned from the Matthew tribe leader. I'm a mission center instructor, Ho Jae Won. Our tribe leader was taught by the chairman of Shincheonji, Lee Man Hee. I'd like to sincerely thank you for attending Shincheonji online seminar, Testimony on the Parables of the Secrets of Heaven and Their True Meanings. Although our denominations and doctrines are different, we're all believers who hope in God and heaven. Since God is the Word, let's meet God through the Word in this blessed time. And through the seminar, let's perceive the true meanings of the parables of the secrets of heaven which Jesus has given us and their reality in this precious time. The title of the word which we'll be examining today is The Figurative Treasure and the Rich. Pastors, I believe that you already know these words. However, I would appreciate it if you can listen to the explanation of these words which I'm about to give you today. Please listen to the true meaning of the figurative treasure and the rich of the Bible and fill it in your hearts as the people of heaven. In the Bible, there are types of treasure. There is physical treasure and spiritual treasure that borrows the characteristics of physical treasure, so two types. Furthermore, a person who has great possession, like treasure, is rich. So, there is also those who are physically rich and spiritually rich, which borrows the characteristics of those who are physically rich. So, two types. Pastors, what do you understand this as? Jesus, in the four Gospels and the book of Revelation, following the will of God's Word, spoke figuratively in parables. Therefore, we cannot only view them literally, but we have to see the true meaning of the parables hidden in these words. Let me give you the true meaning of the figurative treasure and the rich. The true meaning of figurative treasure is the word. Also, the true meaning of someone who is spiritually rich is someone who has an abundance of the word. Then let's see how did these true meanings come about through the Bible one by one. Let's all together read the main reference verse in Revelation chapter 3, verse 17 to 18. You say, I am rich, I have acquired wealth and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so that you can become rich and white clothes to wear so that you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes so you can see. Yes, you read well. Looking at the main reference, we can see out of the messengers of the seven churches, the messenger in the church of Laodicea says, I am rich, I do not need a thing. Then this messenger is saying that he himself is rich. What kind of rich does that make him? Yes, you're right. That makes him a self-claimed rich. However, what's important? is that in Jesus' sight, the messenger in the church of Laodicea is not rich. He is actually poor. And then he says, buy gold refined in the fire so that he can become rich. If the messenger in Laodicea was physically poor, blind, and naked, then there would have been no way for the messenger in Laodicea to not know that he is poor, blind, and naked. 
This shows that this is not talking about physical rich. It's a prophecy. In parable, it's a figurative rich. Then in order to become rich, which Jesus speaks about, the gold that is needed is also spiritual gold. But spiritual gold is also one of treasures. So let's find out what a figurative treasure is. In order to understand the true meaning of figurative treasure, we have to know the characteristics of physical treasure. And the reason is because Figurative treasure borrows the characteristics of physical treasure. So if we know the characteristics of physical treasure, we'll be easily able to understand the true meaning of spiritual treasure. Everyone, when you say treasure, what comes to your mind? Gold, silver, sapphire. There are various kinds of jewels, right? Then what is the characteristic of this physical treasure? They're precious and valuable, isn't it? And the reason is because even though a long time passes, treasure does not change in its appearance. And not anyone can have it easily. That's why it, it is valuable. In the Bible, these treasure, various kind of treasure is written in the Bible. Physical treasure in the Bible we can see in gold, silver, pearl, and on. But altogether, we could call them treasure. And until now, when we thought about treasure, we only thought about physical treasure. However, treasure in the Bible, there is physical and also spiritual. And we have to think about them together. Then let's see what it says in Proverbs chapter 25, verse 11 to 12. A word aptly spoken is like apples of gold in settings of silver. Like an earring of gold or an ornament of fine gold is a wise man's rebuke to a listening ear. Yes, you read well. So a word aptly spoken is like apples of gold. And a wise man's rebuke to a listening ear is like a what? earring of gold and an ornament of fine gold. This is not talking about physical gold here. Using gold, treasure, figuratively to symbolize the word, is used here. A word amply spoken or a wise man's rebuke, like gold is unchanging, it is referring to the word of God. This word is so valuable, it is unchanging. That is why it is like gold. Men's word do change. However, God's word of truth, like gold, never changes. Following this, in Psalms chapter 12, verse 6, it says, The words of the Lord are flawless. Like silver refined in a furnace of clay, purified seven times. It has been purified, meaning there is no, nothing impure mixed in it. It is clean. God's word is not mixed with anything else. It is very pure. This is why it is like silver refined in a furnace of clay, purified seven times. If, we have, if it has been refined in the furnace of clay, purified seven times, then there's no impurities in it, right? The silver that has been refined seven times, it is also one of treasure. It is referring to the word. Even in our daily life, to a beloved person or an object, we say, this is my first treasure, right? Number one treasure. Similarly, what God values, the word of truth, but not only the word of truth, but a person with God's word of truth is like treasure. Like this, in Lamentations chapter 4, verse 2, the sons of Zion are called precious. 
And these precious sons of Zion are like gold. Who are the sons of Zion that appear here? It is not referring to Gentiles. It is referring to God's people. God's people have been distinguished from other nations. And because they've received God's word, they possess God's word. And they're referred to as gold. And Jesus also is referred to as a Jew. And let's see what it says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4 to 5. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Yes, you read well. So referring to Jesus here, it says he is a precious living stone. Precious living stone, meaning he is a jewel, right? But it says you also are being built into a spiritual house, like living stones. So it's not only Jesus who is like a jewel. The 12 disciples of Jesus are also 12 jewels to organize the true meaning of spiritual treasure is the word. Furthermore, a person with the word is like treasure. Similarly then, a believer who has God's word is as valuable as treasure. So beloved pastors, theology students, and congregation members, through this time of seminar, we also must fill ourselves up abundantly with God's word and become God's treasure. Following this, let's read a passage that talks about treasure in Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 to 15. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents of money, to another two talents, and to another one talent, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. Yes, you read well. This is a parable regarding the kingdom of heaven. First, there is a man. And if you further, we can say that he is a master that appears. And this master has to go on a journey. So he calls his servants and entrusts his property to them, and he returns. Who is this master? It is Jesus. Jesus goes to prepare a place, and he promises to come back. And this shows that Jesus who comes back according to the promise is the master here. And Jesus to the servants according to their ability entrusts property to them. Everyone, the talent that we see here, what do you know this talent as? Many people think of this talent as some kind of skill. But talent is actually talking about talent of money. Talent of gold, it's a unit of measurement for money. So he called the servants and what he gave them was not talent and skill, he gave them gold. Like this, Jesus gave them to the servants five talents of gold, two talents of gold, one talent of gold. And the servants who received five talents of gold and two talents of gold went right away and produced more, as much as they received. However, the servant who received one talent buried it on the ground and hid it, hid the master's money. And Jesus who returned settled accounts with those he with those who he entrusted property, and those who received five and two talents produced more, so they were complimented that they did well. 
but the one who received one talent did not produce more, so what has been given to him was taken away, and he was called worthless. And he was thrown into darkness where there was weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, we hear, we see gold, which is one of the treasures that we, we learned today. Everyone who, you who are listening to these words, the gold, the talent of gold that Jesus gave to the servants, do you think this is physical gold? It's not physical gold, it is spiritual gold, which is the word that's given to them. Then the servants who receive the word that is like gold, although the amount is different, they did their best to produce more, right? But the gold here is referring to the word. Therefore, what does it mean to produce? It means to deliver the word. It means to evangelize. Our loving pastors, theology students, and congregation members worldwide, the words that we're listening to the, in this seminar, we have to engrave it in our hearts. Well, so then, with this word of truth that we receive from Jesus, we have to put our utmost effort to participate in the work of salvation. Now we looked at figurative treasure. Understanding this, we can see uh, in the main reference, Revelation chapter 3, verse 17 to 18, the reason why Jesus tells the messenger in the loud church of Laodicea to buy gold refined in the fire this gold is not referring to physical gold, it's spiritual gold. It is referring to filling oneself with the Word. Now let's find out the types of spiritual treasure. There are two kinds of spiritual treasure. One is God's treasure and the other is Satan's treasure. God's treasure is the Word of Truth. But Satan's treasure is fake treasure. It is false truth. In Revelation chapter 17, verse 4 to 5, this Babylon prostitute is glittering with gold, precious stones, and pearls. Then the prostitute written here is the one who receives Satan's seed, meaning false truth. It is a false pastor whom the spirit of Satan is one with. Because he is a false pastor, he adorns himself with false truth, which is symbolized as gold, precious stones, and pearls. Meaning, this gold, precious stones, and pearls the prostitute has is referring to Satan's treasure. In reality, false truth. Satan's treasure is also seen in Revelation chapter 18, verse 12. In the home of demons, Babylon, Babylon's cargoes is referred to as gold, silver, precious stones, and pearls. This also is referring to not physical treasure, but also false truth. Looking at this, we can understand. I must not have Satan's treasure, which is false truth. I must have the true, I must have God's words inside of us so that we can become God's treasure. Now we look at Satan's treasure. The reason why we're able to understand treasure, which is spoken figuratively, is because the reality has appeared. The reality of God's treasure at the first coming was the word of truth. And those who receive the word of truth, which is Jesus and his disciples, they are those who possessed God's words. So in God's sight, they are like treasure. Everyone, you who are listening to today's seminar, do you have God's treasure or do you have Satan's treasure? Looking through the word, we can see it's only those who have God's treasure that can enter heaven. But this heaven that we hope for, did you know that it is made up of treasure? If we sincerely hope 
for heaven, then we must have complete understanding of these things too, right? Because we're looking at treasure today, let's look at heaven in the spiritual world that is made up of treasure. Heaven in the spiritual world where God dwells is made up of treasure. In Revelation chapter 21, it is recorded there in great detail. But many people are mistaken to think that that is physical treasure. Everyone, have you been to heaven? Or have you heard a testimony about heaven? But we must not listen to words of man. We must listen to God's words that are written in the Bible and perceive it certainly, isn't it so? Let's see what it says in Revelation chapter 21, verse 10 to 14. Let's read it in one voice. And he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God, and its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with twelve gates, and with twelve angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. There were three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, and three on the west. The wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Yes, you read well. The holy city New Jerusalem is the kingdom of heaven in the spiritual world. Apostle John was carried away in the, by the Spirit and he sees the, holy, the kingdom of heaven in the spiritual world. And looking there, he sees 12 pearl gates and 12 foundation, which are 12 jewels. This is referring to Jesus' 12 disciples. And the city and the path of pure gold, the street of pure gold is there. And that is referring to the word of truth that is valuable and unchanging. And the holy city, New Jerusalem, Looking at Revelation chapter 21 verses 1 to 2, it comes down to holy it comes down to new heaven new earth which is Shincheonji. Everyone if this kingdom of heaven in the spiritual world, the holy city in New Jerusalem was made up of actual physical treasure then we, right now, have the most advanced science and technology would have been not, not been able to find this heaven. No, we would have already found it. Uh, therefore, we can see this kingdom of heaven in the spiritual world spoken of in the Bible, the holy city in New Jerusalem is not made up of physical treasure. Holy city in New Jerusalem, the kingdom of heaven in the spiritual world, is made up of the word of truth and those who have perceived the word of truth. The organization of heaven of those who have perceived the word of truth. The word is spiritual treasure and the spirits who have perceived the word are also spiritual treasure. This is how the kingdom of heaven in the spiritual world is created with figurative treasure. In the spiritual world, it is created in, with treasure like this. In the Lord's Prayer, we always pray. And just like that, on earth, it has to be created with jewels, right? In Matthew chapter 6, verse 10, we say, Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What has been created in heaven is the kingdom of heaven in the spiritual world. And this earth is referring to the kingdom of heaven in the physical world. Looking through Revelation chapter 21, we can see how the kingdom of heaven in the spiritual world is made with spiritual jewels, figurative treasure, and it has 12 per gates and 12 foundations as the main point. And if this is what is created in heaven, it has to be created in the same appearance on this earth. What is created on this earth is the kingdom of heaven in the physical world. 
And the heaven in the physical world is also created with spiritual treasure. Meaning, the kingdom of heaven in the spiritual world in the physical world is talking about the word of truth and the people with the word of truth. Organization of heaven. And it must have 12 jewels, meaning 12 tribes. In order for it to be created on earth according to the promise as it is in heaven. Everyone, 신천지, has been created according to these words through the word of truth and the people who perceive the word of truth. And it is created into the 12 tribes. And this, according to Revelation chapter 21, is the reality of what has been created on earth. We must perceive the true meaning of the parables along with their reality so that we can become also the physical entities of treasure which God acknowledges. Next, let's look at figurative rich. The true meaning of someone who is figuratively rich is a person who has a lot of the word. Then why is a person who has a lot of the word referred to as someone who is rich? In order to understand this, we have to understand the characteristics of someone who is physically rich. Everyone who is rich, someone who has a lot of possession, such as gold, silver, and jewels. A lot of people want to be rich, but there are types of rich in the Bible, different kinds of rich. There's those who are physically rich and spiritually rich. And because there are two kinds of rich, then there must also be two kinds of treasure. These two kinds of rich have physical treasure and spiritual treasure. And someone who has a lot of physical treasure is physically rich. Someone who has a lot of spiritual treasure is spiritually rich. Then in the Bible, let's find out about those who are physically rich. What does God say about someone who is physically rich and spiritually rich? What kind of words did God give us in the Bible? Can someone who is rich enter heaven? What kind of rich is a rich that can enter heaven? What kind of rich is a rich that, can, that goes to hell? Let's find out. First, let's see someone who is physically rich. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, Jesus says, that no one can serve two masters. The two masters here are referring to God and money. Meaning, one cannot serve both God and money, isn't that so? Or possession. Through Apostle Paul, he said this. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, that the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Therefore, those who love money wander from the faith and pierce themselves with many griefs. So if one loves money, they ultimately end up forsaking God and wandering from the faith. Therefore, Jesus says, that it is difficult for the rich to enter heaven. And in, figuratively, he said, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Then, but this does not mean that the rich cannot enter heaven. It means that in order to go to heaven, one must get rid of their love of possession. Just like this, Someone who is rich in wealth and position, that's the physical characteristic of someone who is physically rich. Then with this, let's understand the true meaning of someone who is spiritually rich. Spiritually rich, just like how there is two meanings of spiritual treasure, there are two meanings of someone who is spiritually rich. One, someone who is rich in God is rich in God's treasure, and that person goes to heaven, which is the word of truth. 
그런데 But when it comes to spiritual treasure, there is not only God's treasure, but there is also Satan's treasure, meaning there is someone who is rich in Satan's treasure. If God's treasure is God's word, words of truth, then Satan's treasure must be false truth. Someone who is rich in Satan's treasure is not heaven, but hell. In Revelation chapter 6, verse 15, it says, The kings of the earth, the princes, the generals, the rich, the mighty, and every slave and every free man, hid in caves and among the rocks of the mountains. They are those who are going to be judged by God and Jesus. But in order to escape this judgment, they are hiding in caves and among the rocks of the mountains. The rich that we find here are not talking about physical rich, there are those who are spiritually rich in Satan's treasure, those who have abundance of false truth, and their result is to receive judgment and to go to hell. So, we now look at Satan's rich. Then in the main reference that we saw, even figurative rich appeared in reality, at the first coming, those who were rich in God's treasure was Jesus and the twelve disciples. Then Jesus and the twelve disciples were filled with God's word, and their result is heaven. Then our loving pastors, theology students, and congregation members we must use the Bible as a mirror and see, am I rich in God or am I rich in Satan? We must examine ourselves. And furthermore, we must meet God's true shepherd, fill ourselves with the words of truth, and enter heaven and receive the blessing of eternal life as God's children. Now, let's look at the conclusion of these words. Figurative treasure is referring to God's word, of God's word, which does not change like gold. And figurative rich is a person who has a lot of the word. God's word is figuratively like treasure. In reality, it is referring to God's word that gives life to our soul. This cannot be compared to any other treasure in this world. God's word of truth frees us from sin, saves us, and gives us eternal life and heaven. Therefore, we must get rid of any greed that we have for physical treasure, and we must get rid of false treasure, which is false truth. We must be rich in the word of God and receive salvation. Everyone, did you listen to today's words well? Let's all perceive the secrets of heaven. If one does not perceive the secrets of heaven, they cannot enter heaven, Jesus says. Then at this time, the true testimony of the parables of the secrets of heaven are being testified plainly because the parables that Jesus gave have appeared in reality according to the promise at the appointed time and we must know this next time we're going to learn the figurative water spring and river another lecturer from Shincheonji 12 tribes will come and testify to it and the, and the next lecture is a more excellent instructor than I am so everyone, please listen and, and receive great perception. Thank you for giving your precious time to listen to the word. Pastors, theology students, and congregation members, God who is watching us will be in great joy. Lastly, because we are one in God and Jesus, Let's all shout, we are one. When I say we are one, please raise your finger like this and shout it out together.
We are one in God and Jesus. We are one. Let's pray with one heart. Father God, we thank you and we're truly grateful the Creator of the heavens and the earth and all creation. God, you've allowed to us this precious life and you've guided our footsteps so that we can listen to your precious words. For this grace, we offer up abundant thanks and glory to you. Our Father God, the secrets of heaven, you've allowed this to us, to the loving pastors, theology students, and all congregation members, this grace and perception, so that we can perceive these words completely and seal these words in our hearts, which are the secrets of heaven. Of revelation, so that we can be reborn as your children. So will you God be with us? So that a day of your reign can come a day sooner. Our Father God, we believe that all creation is now being made new. At a time like this, our Father, will you receive all the glory and may all mankind on this earth be those who can live with you eternally. God, we pray that you will listen to our prayer and we pray in the name of Holy and Merciful Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for listening to the end.